you really want to compare Paul with Muhammad Light and Muhammad's teaching? Well, we'll do it. I'll, I'll entertain you. Go ahead. If you're sincere and you can keep respect, I'll entertain you. All right. Um, what about Paul? So just like, <laughs> okay, so I, just talking about uh, the prophecies that uh, Paul made, like, uh, for example, uh, First Thessalonians. Uh, 4, 13, 18, chapter 5. Yeah, 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 that one. one. He said that um, the hour would not come uh, until uh, he passes away or something like no, that. No, he didn't say that. You misread him because in First Thessalonians 5, 1 to 10, he says, if we're alive or dead, when the, Christ, the Lord comes, we are ready. Have you even read it? Here, let me show it to you. But I'm going to show you why, if you read the next chapter, you understand Paul's point. No one knows that they're our, right? Yeah. Okay. So when Paul tells you that the Lord comes and he will raise us up, because he doesn't know if the Lord's going to come in his lifetime or he's going to come after he's dead. And I'm going to show you that. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. So he's saying, we are alive until the coming of the Lord. Meaning maybe he won't come when we're alive. I'll prove that. Will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So you're saying, see, he says he's going to be alive. No, no. Let's read the next chapter because it goes on. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers, see the time when it's going to happen. You have no need of anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. While they are saying peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman who is pregnant and they will never escape. But you brothers are not in darkness that the day would overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's what you missed. Look at verse 10. Who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. He doesn't know if he's going to be alive. When Jesus comes, he may be asleep. Who died for us, so whether we are awake or asleep, so if you read in context, you're not going to misunderstand Paul. Because Paul doesn't know when Jesus is coming. He may come in my lifetime and I'll be changed. Or he may come when I'm asleep and then he'll raise me. That's why the same Paul says this. Wait, asleep has a meaning um, that sleep like, means dead. dead. Okay. Okay. Now, to prove to you that Paul doesn't know if he's going to be alive or dead, watch, watch, yeah. brothers. 1 Corinthians 6, 14. Not, now, God has not only raised the Lord, but will raise us up. Through his power. Well, Jesus died and God raised him. So Paul is saying he will raise us from death too. So which is it, Paul? Are you going to be dead or alive? I don't know. Okay. Um, so why did, he, why did he exactly say that then? Uh, because he's telling you be ready because it can happen anytime. Oh, Let me read this again. 2 Corinthians 4.14. Knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will present us with you. So he's saying be ready. It can happen now and it can happen when we're dead. But you need to be ready. Because you don't know it's going to come like a thief in the night. That's what he just said. Didn't he say that in first Thessalonians 5? Like a thief. So do you know when the thief comes? No. no. That's what he says. The Lord will come just like a thief in the night. But you shouldn't be surprised because if you're alive when he comes, there are going to be certain signs and you're going to know he's near. But then it may not happen in our lifetime. But if you're going to use that argument, your prophet in this hadith said, Isa is going to descend. In the lifetime of the Sahaba, and they were going to see it. Oh, really? Where, where did he say that? I mean, you're not Quran only, right? No, I'm also a uh, Hadith. Okay, where am I showing to you? Nered Abu Huraira, Said Bukhari, Volume 3, Book 34, Number 425. Allah's Apostle said, By him, in whose hands is my soul, son of Maryam, will shortly descend amongst you people. The word Muslim is not in the Arabic. 
Okay, oh. that's Sahih Bukhari. Okay, Sahih Bukhari, Volume Three, Number Six Fifty Six, right here. Nairab Bukhari, Allah's Apostle said, "The hour will not be established until the Son of Mary descends amongst you." You, he's talking to them. Oh, okay, Sahih Bukhari. Bukhari. Um, Sahih Bukhari. What? Is it is it Sahih? Yes, Sahih Bukhari. Here, Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari. Here, another one. Sahih Bukhari. I'll get you the link to the article. Allah's apostle said, by him in whose hands my soul is surely, Jesus son of Mary, will soon descend amongst you. Soon among you. All right, here. Sal Bukhari, number 658 here. Allah's apostle said, how will you be when the son of Mary descends amongst you? You don't get any clearer than that. Sanam, how will you be when he comes upon you? Well, hey, it's been 1,400 years. Where is Isa? Okay, now let's go Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim. Abu Hurairah reported that the Messenger of Allah said, By him in whose hand is my life, the Son of Mary will soon descend among you as a just judge. Never happened, buddy. It's been 14 years, they're dead. Sai Muslim 290. It is narrated on the authority of Abu Hurairah. The Messenger of Allah observed, What will it be your state when the Son of Mary descends amongst you? So, what will you be your condition, Abu Bakr Omar, when he descends amongst you? Sai Muslim number 291. Again, Abu Raira, what would you do when the son of Mary would descend and lead you? Lead you. He's going to lead you, Abu Bakr Omar. See, I mean, here. How about this one? Sai Muslim 292. It is narrated on the authority of Abu Raira that the Messenger of Allah observed, what would you do when the son of Mary would descend amongst you and would lead you as one amongst you? I mean, does it any get clear? Among you, lead you, among you. Ibn Abi Dhir, on the authority of Abu Raira, narrated, your leader amongst you. Ibn Abidid said, do you know what the words? He would lead as one amongst you? I mean, I said, explain these to me. He said, he would lead you according to the book of your Lord. The final one. Sunan Abu Dawood, number 4310. Abu Huraira. The prophet said, there is no prophet between me and him. That is Jesus will descend to the earth. When you see him, recognize him. So now look, I summarize all the language. The son of Mary will soon descend amongst you. This is al Bukhari here. Will shortly descend amongst you. That's Bukhari. Will sin descend among you as a just judge. Sai Muslim. Descends amongst you. Sai Bukhari. Amongst you. And will lead you as one amongst you. When you see him, recognize him. I mean, buddy, if we're going to play that game, 1,400 years and Jesus never came down. I have my own freedom of speech and I can say You what don't have freedom of speech. Opinion. According to your Quran, you're an Allah and you are the property of a man if you're married. Or until you're married, you're the property of your father. Are you married? Yes, I am married. And your husband's letting you speak? Yeah. Wow. Is he a good Muslim? We are good Muslims. It's not you He's who can you speak? It's, it's, it's not, not you who can decide we are a good Muslim or not. No, because unless your husband gives you permission, you can't do much. That's in your Quran and the Sunnah. So he gave you permission to speak live? Permission Does to you know speak? you're doing this? Permission to speak? What do you mean? Lie to non-Muslims. Islam, Islam has the most beautiful rights for women. Like beating you up? Chapter 4, verse 34? That's beautiful? That's that's your interpretation. Okay, explain to me what Idrubu Hunna means. I don't know. I don't know that. Okay, Yasmin, why don't you go pray? You're not you're not gonna talk to you. There's no point in talking to each other. You don't know much. I'm just being honest because most will say, oh, inter in Sam, you your on. interpretation is okay. your own interpretation. <laughs> so do not, do not, do not. Are you okay? Okay, let's talk. Are you okay with, with your husband, if you wanted to, having four wives and concubines? You okay with that? That's, that's a very good uh, topic there. Are you okay, okay. with it? I'm not going to answer your question without not. without getting into details because what details? Quran statements are very very profound. Okay, four thirty four and four three, chapter four verse three. Mary, if you want two, three, or four, and if you can't deal fairly, one, and as many as your right hands possess. Okay, what's unclear about that? Okay, first off, a man cannot marry a second wife. If the first wife does not give permission. According to what school? According to my understanding. Okay. But I'm saying, did your prophet get permission of the nine wives to marry one another? Absolutely. So you mean if I show you Aisha complaining that if she had a choice, she would keep Muhammad to herself. What was Aisha saying? 
I don't know. So why are we talking, man? You don't know. Every time I want to quote something, you say you don't know. Why don't you go sleep or do? Fa By the way, when you do fajr, do you flush water in and out of your nose three times? Yeah. Like when you do wudu for fajr prayer, the morning prayer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Three times, right? You and your husband. Yeah. Okay, so everyone, you know, everyone who does, uh, who does the wudu should. should well, let's do keep that. it with you and your husband. So when you're about to do fajr. Morning prayer, you have to do wudu and you put water in and out of your nose three times, you and your husband. Do you know why you and your husband do that? To clean out our nose. No, because Muhammad said to flush Satan out of your nose because he sleeps in your nose. That's one. Okay. That's even more that? deeper. That's that's more deeper. I but do you believe I that? I, I gave you a very basic thing. Yeah, basic but do you believe that? Do you believe I Satan gave you a very in your basic nose? explanation. But there are not just this. Or just for cleansing, there are so many benefits. That's not my question. Do you so believe many benefits in cleaning your nose and no? I, the benefit is to flush Satan out of your nose. Here it is. Here it is. Narrated Aisha. I'm sorry, Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, if any one of you rouses from sleep and performs ablution, he should wash his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out thrice, because Satan has stayed in the upper part of his nose all the night. Okay, and this is Sahih Bukhari. Let me get you the link from Sunnah.com. Here's the link, Sal Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 54, Hadith 5. Man, my eye besides bad. Let me see, 16. Here it is, the link, so you don't think I'm lying. So Muhammad said that's why you do it, because you got to flush Satan out of your nose. So is okay, Satan in your husband's point? nose? Okay, what's the point? How many noses does Satan live in? Because if you're flushing him out of your nose, and your husband's flushing out of his nose, that means he's in your nose and his nose at the same time. How is that possible? How is it possible? Because Satan is a... Um, a form of, uh, I don't know exactly what form it is, but Satan is with almost everyone leading into evil. So Satan's omnipresent, huh? Wow. Even your God is not omnipresent, but Satan is, huh? Damn. God is always present, always watching. And, so is and Allah, you know why, and you know I didn't why say Satan is sent, watching. right? And okay. you know why Satan is sent, right? And can you know you, why Satan is there, right? Point? I didn't say Allah is watching. I know you believe he's watching. I didn't say that. Satan, unlike Allah, is with you and your husband and all the Muslim noses at the same time. So he's here in your noses, all of you. Even Allah is not with you the way Satan is. So how can Satan be with all of you mm. in your noses physically, something that Allah doesn't do? That's not, right. That's not right. What your statement is not right. Because Allah, Allah is with you whenever you are So right. is Allah physically with you like Satan's physically in your nose? Physically, seriously, yeah, Allah, okay. is, Allah is so small that he is can water, get into my nose. Is water physical? No, Allah, is, Allah water is, physical? is Allah so small that he can get into my nose? But wait, Satan is so big he can fit in all of your noses at the same time. Satan's form is different. Do you know what's the form of Satan? I don't want to find out, but you should because he's in your nose I right now. I don't know, I don't know either him. because that's ilm al -ghaib. But he's in your nose right now. Do you Did know you what is ilm al -ghaib? Ilm al -ghaib means knowledge of the unseen. I just okay, told you. Good. Okay, good. I know good. it is, but before you go on, Satan's in your nose right now. Do you know that, right? I don't know. Yeah, your prophet just said that when you perform fajr, you have to flush water in and out of your nose because Satan stays there overnight. It's now overnight. It's night where you're at, right? Um. Say, okay. So, so he's you, in your nose. Did you flush okay, him out? Okay. Satan. No, did you flush him out? Because maybe that's why you're having a hard time understanding me. Because Satan's in your nose, occupying himself, confusing you. That's why you can't understand. So he's in your nose right now. Did you flush him out? Go flush him out. Maybe Satan, you can Satan is not in my nose as long as I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not what Muhammad said. Muhammad said he's there in your nose until you flush him out before Fajr prayer. Another question I want to ask you. When the call to prayer, Adhan, is made, it says Satan farts. He likes to fart so he doesn't hear the call to prayer. So does Satan fart, really? Does he blow winds? And if he does, how nasty is the smell of his farts? What? I haven't heard this. Say that again. Oh, hold on. Let me give it to you. Yeah, it's your prophet said that when there's a call to prayer, the Adhan, Satan blows wind, farts so loud, so he doesn't hear it, and he takes off. So I want to know. It, here, let me. You're laughing at your prophet? Stuck for Allah. Here it is, man. How are you laughing at your prophet? Here you go. Sal Bukhari. I, I'm not... That's, that's, one, that's, that's your own way of describing it. Okay, here, I'm, here. I'm, not, I'm not laughing at my beloved prophet Muhammad okay, on him. That's your way of describing, buddy. Okay, let me, let me read it for you. Al-Bukhari, huh? you make me laugh, I swear. Okay. Narrated Abu Huraira, 
Allah's messenger said, when the adhan is pronounced, Satan takes his heels and he passes wind. So he farts, passes wind, he farts with noise, a loud fart. <laughs> During his flight, in order not to hear the adhan. This is Sa'id Bukhari, Sa'id Bukhari, and then he comes back when the adhan is finished. Volume 1, Hadith 582. So not only does he fart, it says with noise. So where that Allah oh, oh, goes... <laughs> Where does, it, where does it say it farts? What do you think the word passes when means in Arabic? This is your interpretation, Sam. Okay, so what is passing when? He blows, he whispers. That's the, the passes wind might have other meanings oh, too. The word means he you farts. Can, you can take any meaning out of your yeah. own desire. In Arabic means he farts and he farts loud. Okay. Is this fart? Does it smell? Is it does it smell as bad as my farts when I'm drinking protein shakes? I don't want to. I don't want to talk on this uh, indecent. No, by the way, I'm, I'm quoting the sunnah of your prophet. This is Muhammad. Why are you ashamed of the sunnah? Stuck for a log. It, it says passes wind. Passes wind does not. The mean word always means fart. farts. It, this it, is it, it's result. not always. Doesn't always mean fart. Same. Oh, so you mean he's going? He's just passing them by going. I don't know. All right, now has there been times where you haven't woken up for morning prayer, Fajr? Very few times. Very few times, right? Do you know why you didn't wake up for Fajr? Shaitan. Shaitan, why? You know, why? how did Shaitan say uh, Because I listened to Shaitan. No, because he pissed in your ears. No. Yeah, because I, I listened to Shaitan. Shaitan said, no, oh, here. you know what? You're so tired. Don't wake up. It's okay if you no, don't. No, it's because he pissed in your ears. He, 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 whispers in, he, he whispers in my ears. This is That's the what you your interpret prophet. as yes, pisses in your ears. Yes, ma'am. This is the son of your prophet says, here it is, Sayyid Bukhari, there's the link. I'm going to send it in private chat. It says, a man did not wake up for Fajr prayer. He didn't hear the call to Adhan because Satan pissed in his ears, was pissing in his ears. Here it is. So you didn't get up because that That's, time. Is, is that a story? Uh, like an event happened? Here, or narrated is, it, Abdullah, is it like. Narrated Abdullah, I'm reading the Hadith. Narrated Abdullah. It was mentioned before the Prophet that there was a man who slept the night till morning after sunrise. The Prophet said he's a man in whose ears or ear Satan had urinated. So Satan pissed in his ears. So did Satan piss in your ears? Is that why you didn't get up? Satan whispered into me saying that you're so tired. Don't jump up. It's oh, okay to not pray Fajr. Okay, That's so why didn't, I didn't pray. He didn't piss in your ears? No, I don't think so. So, but but he did piss in this man's ear. So you're okay with saying he pisses, he takes a leak, he farts, he stays in your nose. You're okay with that? Now, did you know that one one Muslim, a Sahaba, a companion Muhammad, he stoned a Shima monkey because she committed zina. She cheated on her husband. A group of monkeys started stoning a she monkey because she committed zina, adultery. A group of monkey started stoning a female monkey. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Let me get it for you. Sa'id Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 58, Hadith number 188. During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, Jahiliya, I saw a she-monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were all stoning it because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse. They were stoning her because she committed zinna. I, too, stoned it along with them. So you believe that monkeys can commit adultery and they should have the sharia applied to them? They should be stoned? Okay. This one... For this hadith, I cannot talk about it because I need to first consult with an Islamic scholar because first off, this is about pre-Islamic period. That's that's something uh, gives me like what pre-Islamic period and how does this man know about this? I need to make sure if this is right and I need details on it. And if I don't okay. know, I cannot talk about it. Okay. What What do you think about Muhammad saying that Jews were turned into rats? Muhammad? Your prophet, yeah. He said that there were some Jews, they were cursed. They were turned to rats. And then later he found out. Where some is this? Oh, okay, I'm going to give it to you. It's it's Sal Bukhari. Now, let me tell you how brilliant your prophet was. How did he realize that they were turned into rats? Watch his genius. This shows he's a prophet, by the way. Okay. okay so well, let me see. Can, can I post it before? Okay, hold on. Let me just post it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your time. Narrated Abu Huraira, the prophet said, a group of this Israelites. Is Quran or Hadith? This is not this Quran, is, this, right? This is Hadith, Bukhari. Then I'm going to give you Quran. Hadith, Sal Bukhari. I gave you the link. Mm -hmm. Narrated Abu Huraira, the prophet said, a group of Israelites was lost. 
Nobody knows what they did. But I do not see them except that they were cursed and changed into rats. How do you know they were changed into rats? Now watch. This is why. For if you put if you put the milk of a she camel in front of a rat, it will not drink it. But if the milk of a sheep is put in front of it, it will drink it. You know what he means? These rats do not drink the milk of a she camel because in Judaism, they cannot eat camels or drink their milk. So these rats would not drink the milk of a she camel because that means they were Jews. These Jews became rats. So these rats were Jewish rats. That's why they didn't drink the milk of a she camel because that's haram for them. But the milk of a sheep, they drank. I told this to Cobb, who asked me, did you hear it from the prophet? I said, yes. Cobb asked me the question several times. I said to Cobb, do I read the Torah? I, I tell you this from the prophet. So you see the genius of your prophet? Your prophet realized, like a genius, hey, these rats, they don't drink the milk of a sheep camel. When I put the milk of a sheep, they drink. These are the Jews that Allah cursed. These are Jewish rats, them stinking rats. That's why they don't drink the milk of camels, because camel is forbidden for them. So do you believe that Allah turned Jews into rats? That's a very, very good question. I really appreciate that. All right. That's a very good question. Um, let, give me, you the let, me, let me let me complete let me complete my sentence if okay. I can if I'm allowed to start. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Again, I'm not a scholar. I have to study on this hadith, okay? And second, let me first tell you, okay? Do you want me to give you the Quran first, though, where it says they were turned into pigs and swine? Um, yeah, if, the, if you can send a screenshot also. Great. Right, well, I'm going to send it to you here in the text. It's chapter 5 of verse 60 of the Quran. Surat al-Ma'idah, Maida, the table spread, ayah 60. Say, O Muhammad, to the people of the scripture, shall I inform you of something worse than that? Regarding the recompense from Allah, those Jews who incurred the curse of Allah and his wrath, right? Those of whom some he transformed into monkeys and swines. So Allah turned some Jews to pigs, monkeys, and rats. Okay. So you believe that? The Jews were turned into pigs, monkeys, and rats? Okay. So um, I need to go to Quran and look at this verse, okay? Look First thing. You see, you see how Allah says in Quran, if this is in Quran, again, this is Quran. This, so it can disclaimer, open disclaimer is only if if this is indeed in the Quran, okay? okay. If, if what you are showing is indeed in the Quran, look at that. Those Jews who incurred the curse of Allah. So Allah turned them into rats and pigs and monkeys. Okay. No, 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 no. Don't, don't. Don't put words into my mouth. Okay. Look at this. Those Jews who incurred the curse of Allah, he mentions that he mentions only those. And, yeah, it, I'm means, saying, yeah, and it means, no, no. And it means that Jews and Christians and Muslims are people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except for the Jews and Christians and Muslims who incurred the curse of Allah. Stop it's not Allah. about just Jews. So they deserve to be it's turned It's not about all Jews. It's not, I know. About, it's not about all Jews. It's not all about all Christians. It's not about all Muslims. It's about only those few who incurred the curse of Allah, including Muslims. Hmm. I'm not saying that Muslims are all good. Muslims are uh, um, all protected. No. Whoever does wrong, regardless of a Jew, regardless of a Christian, regardless of a Muslim, they are cursed and they will get punished. And okay. one more thing. You got that. Okay, yeah. You already did. You told me it's only Jews who are evil and cursed. Not all Jews. We are, You already explained it. You want to give me another five-hour lesson Not on just it? Narrated Abu Huraira. This Abu Huraira is classic. The Prophet said the people of Bani Israel used to take bath naked all together looking at each other. The prophet Moses used to take bath alone. So he used to go take a bath alone by himself. Now watch. They said, Wallahi, by Allah, nothing prevents Moses from taking a bath with us except that he has scrotal hernia. So they were making fun of him. He's embarrassed to take bath with us because he has a physical defect. Okay, now watch. This one I need you to help me understand. So once Moses went out to take a bath and put his clothes over a stone. Pay attention now, Yasmin. Over a stone. And then that stone ran away 
with his clothes. Wow. The stone ran and stole the clothes of Moses. Then what did Moses do? Moses followed that stone. He chased after that stone saying, my, my clothes are stolen. <laughs> I'm sorry. My clothes are stolen. My clothes are stolen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait, wait, let me finish it. The, the people of Bani Israel saw him and said, Wallahi, Moses has no defect in his body. Moses took the clothes, his clothes, and began to beat the stone. Ya kafir, ya munafik. Abu Huraira added, By Allah, there are still six or seven marks present on the stone from that excessive beating. Okay, so my question to you this is from Bukhari. Volume 1, Book 5, Hadith 277. Are you telling me a stone ran away stealing Moses' clothes? And you believe that? Can I talk? I mean, because I have two more questions. So, you, But I want to know, you believe that? Can, yeah. Uh, so okay. can I? do you want my response now? Before you do, let me ask you a second one. Then I'll get you a response. Second question. So you believe Allah caused the stone to run away with the clothes so that Moses could run naked, fully naked in front of the entire Bani Israel, women and children, married women, looking at Moses' naked body, seeing his genitals as he's running to show that Moses' body is perfect. Do you believe that too? Did I did I first say yes for the first statement? But you got to. This is Sunnah. This is I, I asked you a simple question. Can, do you want my response now? I just asked you. I didn't say yes. So you're rejecting Bukhari, the son of your prophet. Stuck for Allah. I am not rejecting Bukhari. I just don't know oh, where don't. this fake Bukhari that you got. Okay, I gave you the link here. You can show it to your scholars. I will, I will confirm with my scholars. Okay, give it here. Here it is. Save the link, though. I just sent a private chat. Yes, I'm okay. going to save. Assuming he says, yes, it's authentic. Let's just assume it's authentic. Just let's say. So you I would then assume, say, uh -uh. Assumption is not as okay. equal as truth. Right. I cannot okay. assume. All right, then. Well, now, what? here's what you're going to do. You take those links, save them, mm -hmm. go talk to your scholar, contact me on Skype if you want to go and talk about Quran and Bible corruption. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Jesus was born of a virgin, right? Yeah. Why? Because Allah made it happen. Why for him, though? This is Allahu A'lam. We don't know. That's it? That's the only excuse you have, Allahu A'lam? We, 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 we don't have any... Uh, any clear reason why Allah did it, but he did okay. it. Okay, well, That's what we all right, know. hold on. So let's see how many things you don't know because I'm going to show you them. Now, in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 42. Because we're not told this. Okay, well, in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 42, it says that Allah preferred Mary and purified Mary and preferred her above all women. You agree? 42? Yeah, chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 42. Recall the time when the angel said, Oh, Mary, surely Allah has chosen you. And has rid you of all impurities. It has preferred you to, to the women of all people. Okay. And actually all creation, but that's okay. So Mary all creation. Okay. So Mary is preferred above all women of creation. Mary, right? That's what the Quran says. Okay, number one. That's number one. Okay. Number two, Mary is the only woman mentioned in the entire Quran, right? Mary is the only woman mentioned yep. in the Quran. No other woman is mentioned by name. And the Quran will say the wife of so and so, the mother of so and so, but it never mentions any woman by name except Mary. Well, you're claiming that, but I didn't confirm it. It's easy, man. Just go Google it if you want. Mary, the word of a woman, the name of a woman, Maryam. I'll stick with you. I'll okay. stick with you, but I'm not gonna admit and that. And you're gonna confirm, confirm it later. You're gonna confirm it later. I will. Soon. I will. I will stick with okay. what's proof. So okay. you're talking about the verse. Stick yes. to the verse. Yeah, no, because this is another proof. Because Mary has a chapter named in her honor. Surat al Maryam, chapter 19, the chapter of Mary. Mary is preferred above all women, and Mary is the only woman mentioned by name in the Quran. Why? Why is she so honored and not the mother of your prophet? Why is she so honored but not the mother of your prophet? And in Sahih Muslim says that Amina, the mother of your prophet, is burning in hell. Who's? Sahih Muslim. You want to read that for you? You can't. You can't just say why is the why you can't just ask these you can't just ask these questions. Why? Why because, can't I? I mean Allah why not? Because you can't question Allah and his logic. Where does it say you oh so you God. mean Allah wants me to be a dummy, a blind follower, and being stupid all my life and not question? So now I'm gonna know it's the truth. 
Yeah, so question, do you question the Bible? No. Of course. Why do you think I end up believing the Bible? Because I question to see if it's true, and I came to that conclusion. Here, I'm asking you questions. You just want to blindly follow. So do you want me to read for you, Sai Muslim, where your prophet was told, don't pray for your mother because she was one of the she was of one of the mushrikun. She's in hell, and his father's in hell. Muhammad's father and mother are in hell. This is, huh? This is nonsense. Do you want me to read the hadith? I mean, it's up to you. And it's from Sunnah. If you, even if you read the hadith, I'm not going to believe it. So you're not going to believe what Sahih Muslim says. Okay, here. But I'm going to give you the link anyway, and I'll read it. Let me just read it. Here it is. Sahih Muslim, book 4, number 2129. Abu Huraira reported, Allah's messenger is saying, I sought permission to beg forgiveness for my mother, but he did not grant it to me. Let me repeat it again. Allah's messenger asked Allah, forgiveness for my mother. But he, Allah, did not grant it to me. I sought permission from him to visit her grave, and he granted it to me. So Allah said, Muhammad, don't pray for forgiveness. I won't forgive her. So the Prophet's mother, she died before she died as a kafira. He received his revelations. Okay, she died as a kafira. She died before he, as a he kafira, right? A disbeliever who was one of the mushrikeen, mushrikun, who used to worship the idols, right? If she doesn't have the knowledge, she's not to blame. Okay, but then why is Allah telling Muhammad, don't ask for forgiveness? That means she's being blamed. Because you don't ask Allah to forgive her if she's not being blamed and she's in sin that needs to be forgiven. Do you understand what you're talking about? What you did I said, tell you about the hadith before? Uh, what did I tell you? <laughs> what did I tell you about the hadith just a little while ago? <laughs> you have to take it. Huh? Uh, I'm laughing because you're getting angry for us. I don't know. Dude, I'm just quoting. I'm not getting angry, but I'm making my point to you. Okay, but dude, this is Sahih Muslim. You want me to then say, hey, man, Sahih Muslim, who cares? But wait, I have to care because this is the Sunnah. You tell me follow Quran and Sunnah. The Sunnah is found in the Sahihain. Al-Bukhari Muslim, the most authentic collection. I quote it. Now you're telling me, don't quote it, man. What I tell you? Dude, what kind of religion is this? You make it up as you go along. What kind of religion is this? I go to your source. I didn't because write Because the Quran is the word of Allah. Okay, where does the Quran honor and the, Muhammad's and mother? The Prophet said, "Don't make hadith about me." Because really, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the the Prophet himself instructed his companions not to make hadith. That's why wow. this this hadith is a debated issue these days. Hold on. And if you don't believe oh, me. Man. Dude. You're going to create more problems, Jihad. Let's take it step by step. Okay. My question is, okay, forget the hadith. We go back to my point again. You made my point. Jesus' mother is so special. Allah mentions her by name in the Quran. But your prophet's mother is not so special because the Quran doesn't even tell us who she was, what's her name, and what's her background. Is that how Allah honored your prophet? He didn't even mention a single thing about his mother in the Quran? So I'm going to know whose mother is. Allah did not mention his, his mother's name. But why does he mention Jesus' Allah. mother's name? Because Jesus was a, was a was a was a prophet. So was and Muhammad. He was a prophet. How come his mother's not mentioned? Because uh, the, Mary was a virgin. So oh, so because she's a virgin, she's I, mentioned. I don't know, okay. my friend. Listen, okay, listen, right. listen. Right. listen. You cannot ask me these questions because. I cannot just answer. Okay, that's fine. Oh, why Allah did this or why Allah did that? Allahu Adam. Now, jihad. Here's what's funny about you. You're gonna call me and ask me questions about my faith, and if I don't answer, then you're gonna laugh at me. You're gonna say, "Yeah, stupid kafir. You don't know the answer, and you're still a Christian." But conveniently for you, when you don't have an answer, you still want to be Muslim and saying, "Well, I don't know. I, I I'm not a scholar," and you still want to believe. So then, why do you attack Christians who want to still believe in their book even though they don't have answers? What we know is that somebody else got put in Jesus' place. Where do you know that from? From the from Islamic sources. And so a source that comes over 600 years after the time of Jesus is more reliable than documents that come within the first century, anywhere from 30 to 60 years after Jesus went to heaven. So a document that's 30 years after Jesus went to heaven is less reliable than your Quran that comes 600 years later. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, buddy. That's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, all, all I'm saying to you is that you there are some other scriptures out there that don't agree with what you guys believe in. Okay, what's our name? Them. 
Name them. Huh? Give me the name. I gave you the Gnostic Gospels. They not only not agree with me, they don't Some agree with Some of the Gnostic Gospels. That's what I'm trying to tell you. None the of them. Gospels, none of them. They, they believe agree. that Jesus was a man. No. A regular man. No, the Gnostics you're quoting either thought the human Jesus was indwelt by the divine. There were some stuck for Allah that even believed that he was not even born of a virgin. Okay. I don't believe that. So, okay, so then why are you appealing to them? Okay, let's go with you. One group of Gnostics thought there is Christ who is a divine being, a God from the higher level of the aeons. When he came to earth, appeared as a man, but wasn't actually human. He didn't have an actual physical body. It just appeared as a body, but he didn't have one. Were they right or wrong? Wrong. Okay. The other Gnostics believe there was a human Jesus, and that divine Christ, that Christ, was different from the human Jesus. He came and dwelt Jesus. Then the human Jesus was nailed on the cross, and the Christ left him. Do you believe that? Were they right? They could have been. Oh, so you mean the Quran is wrong when it says Jesus is the Christ? Because this group says, no, Jesus is not the Christ. He's a man. Christ is God that indwelt him and left him. So then Muhammad is wrong. Nobody knows for sure, and the Quran doesn't go into detail about it. The Quran says Jesus is the Messiah. What are you talking about? Yeah, the Jesus is the Messiah. This group said Jews he's thought. not. You're not listening, see? Jihad, you're not listening. This group said Jesus is not the Messiah. He's a man. And the Messiah is a divine being, a God that came to dwell in him. But then that Christ left him when the man Jesus died and was nailed to the cross. And you're saying the Quran agrees with this? The Quran came to correct all the disputes that they had. So the Quran says that they disputed amongst themselves. So they're wrong? Jesus. Both these Gnostic groups were wrong? Yeah, they're wrong in oh, different good. angles according to okay, Islam. Okay, good. So then don't appeal to them because... In different angles. Okay, don't appeal to them because they don't agree with you. Now, where does the Quran say that someone else died in Jesus' place? That's Surah the Nisa, chapter 4, verse 157, right? Okay. Show me where it says that someone was made right. to look like yeah, Jesus. That's enough for me. Mm. Take it easy. Okay. Jihad, take care. We'll talk some other time. All right. Pray for Jihad. His name is Jihad, Jihad Yusuf. I just have a couple questions. Um, you know, I was born Muslim. I was born into Islam, and right. And I used to be super religious. Like I used to, you know, wear the hijab and everything, pray five mm -hmm. times a day. So, someone had asked me if is it true that you know men can be on women? I yeah. said absolutely not. Where did you find that? Oh, it's in your book. Show mm -hmm. me. You know, they would show me it. And I can't really defend it no you know more. Like there's nothing I can say because it's clearly there. That is there. Um and other things about the Prophet Muhammad. Um, see now I'm kinda stuck because you know, uh sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay, no need there's, to be there's, there's a lot of apparently there's a lot of horrific things about the Prophet. Yes, there is. Too many. Sal Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 6, Hadith 301. He's going to be quoting Surah Al-Baqarah, Chapter 2, Verse 228, that it takes two women to equal a man's testimony. Narin Abu Sayyid Al-Khudri, once Allah's Messenger went out to the Musalla to offer the prayer of Eid Al-Adha or Al-Fitr prayer. Then he passed by the woman and said, Oh woman, give alms, as I've seen that the majority of the dwellers of hellfire were you. So most people in hell are women? That's what it says. Really? Hmm. Okay, but now why? Um, I'm not sure. From what I heard, though, again, this was a long, like, long time ago. It, I heard it was because of gossip. Women like to gossip. No, he says it right there, sisters, because it says you're stupid in comparison to men. Read it. All right. Well, yeah, no, I, I see it now. So. All right, watch it. Let me read it. It was an, yeah. another unfortunate lie. Exactly. They've been lying through their teeth to you, huh? Because they asked the reason. They asked, why is it so, Allah's messenger? He replied, you curse frequently and are grateful to your husbands. Wait, wait, don't men curse also? Yes. Aren't they ungrateful to their wives? Yes, very. But here it says, no, you're the ones who are the majority of hell for these reasons. Now watch here. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. 
A cautious, sensible man could be led astray by some of you. So a man who's, ca who's cautious and sensible can be misled by you, meaning look how evil, stupid, and deficient you are. Now watch. The woman asks, all as messenger, what is deficient in our intelligence and religion? He said, is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? Now he's quoting Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 2, 28, that says, two men are needed to bear witness. If you can't find two men, one man and two women. One man and two women. Wow. They replied in the affirmative. Yeah, you're right, because the Quran says so. He said, this is the deficiency in her intelligence. Isn't it true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menses? The woman replied in the affirmative. He said, this is the deficiency in religion. Now, do you see what you got blamed for? Do you have any control over your menses? No, I know. How's that your fault? It's not. <laughs> but it says... Yeah, I've always wondered that. I've gotten asked that question. Hmm. Um, so that's your religion. But now let me show you the difference with Jesus. You ready? Mm -hmm. Remember Allah made Muhammad lust for a married woman? Yes. Okay, now watch. Look what Paul's going to say. And by the way, he's never married. Look what Paul's going to say about how husbands should treat their wives and their equality. Meaning, in the eyes of God, they have the same value and dignity and, and worth. But first, let me show you what Jesus says about Muhammad. For lusting... For a married woman. Matthew 5, 27, 27, 28. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in her, his heart. Wait, did Muhammad lust for a married woman? Mm -hmm. So he's an adulterer in his heart, right? Unfortunately, um, reading the context... That's what it says, yes. What happens when a man divorces a woman unlawfully and then someone marries her? That's what Zayd did. He just divorced her, right, for no good reason? Yeah. And then Muhammad married her, right? Yeah. Matthew 5, 31, 32. Now it was said, whoever sends his wife away, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except for the reason of sexual immorality. Now was Zainab sexually immoral? No, right? Because mm -hmm. even Zayed said, no, she's good. So he just divorced her for no good reason. So a man who divorces his wife makes her commit adultery. Whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Now, did Muhammad marry a divorced woman? He did. And that woman was not sexually immoral, right? No. And that means Muhammad is an adulterous pig and he made Zainab an adulterous woman, according to Jesus. Now, let me give you... What Paul says about women, 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 to 5. Now, concerning the things about what you wrote, they were asking questions. Look, you know, uh, there's tribulation. Christians are getting killed. Should we get married? Should we be celibate? But we're burning, right? Mm -hmm. It is good for man not to touch a woman, meaning be celibate. But because of sexual immoralities, each man is to have his own wife and each woman is to have her own husband, right? Yes. So one Man for one woman, one woman for one man. Right there. Mm -hmm. Now watch the equality. The husband must fulfill his duty to his wife. And likewise, also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. He owns her body. But now watch. And likewise, also the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. You get any more fair than this? Galatians 3, 26 to 29. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Now watch. If you are baptized into Christ and you believe in Christ, God does not discriminate. He doesn't think Jews are better than Greeks, Greeks better than Jews. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free man. Free man is not better than a slave if you are in Christ Jesus. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. The man is not better than a woman. And if you belong to Christ, then you're Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. Did you see what the true God revealed in Jesus just said? Yes. He said, you who are baptized into Christ and believe in Christ, you are precious and equally valued and equally loved as the man. You understand? Yeah. So... This is the true God revealed in Jesus Christ. The true God revealed in Jesus. And another thing, did you notice? 
it says you're all sons of God. In Islam, Allah is not a father. You're not his daughter. You're his slave. A slave. Yes, we're slaves. But the God of the Bible says, no, you are my daughter. And did you know that the God of the Bible loves adoption? Can I show it to you? Yes, please. <laughs> Here it is. Look at the difference. Galatians 4, verses 4 to 7. But when the fullness of the time came, <clears throat> God sent forth his son, that's Jesus, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive what? Adoption. As sons. Sons mean sons and daughters. It's a generic. Mm -hmm. and because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son to our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Did you see what that means? Mm -hmm. When you believe in Christ, the Holy Spirit emboldens you and assures you, you are his daughter and the father loves you and you can call him daddy. Abba means daddy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son or a daughter. If a son, then an heir through God. So how can Allah the Quran be the God revealed in Jesus when the God revealed loves adoption? In fact, who do you think started all these adoption agencies? Christians. It's a fact. Who do you think are the leading proponents of adoption? Christians. Who do you think go out of the way to adopt? Christians. Why? Because they're reflecting the spirit of their father. Our father wants to be our father and adopts, and he loves adoption, and we love what God loves and hate what God hates. And that's it. Let's see what it is. Okay, the demons are coming out, folks. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Not much, and if you have an attitude, it's going to be a lot happening. What do you believe? What do you believe about God? I, I respect God. What God do you respect? The Almighty, the Creator. Who is He? The one that created man. How do you know about Him? I'm about to hang up on you. Play these games with me, dude. How do you know about Him? Like the Bible. Okay, thank you. So why are you playing games? What do you call God? What's His name? But you're off the topic. What What's His name? He doesn't have a name. So if I show you as a name, are you going to apologize? Yeah. Okay, go to Exodus chapter 3, verse 15. Open up your Bible. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. What did he say? Who sent them? God. No, read it again. See, it's right in front of you and you're lying to me. Read it again. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, okay. the God of your fathers. The Lord, right? The God of yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now go to Exodus six, two to three. Don't get animated, son. Chill out. Okay. Or chill you out. Go to Exodus six, two to three. I don't see a name. Where's the name? Which part of Lord wasn't clear? The L or the O or the R or the D? Lord is not a name. Yes, it is. Because in Hebrew, what is it? So I'm gonna embarrass you for pontificating. What is it in Hebrew? What is it? So you're telling me it's not a name. You don't know what is in Hebrew. Hashem. Okay. What is Hashem? His name. But you just said he didn't have a name. So what is Hashem? What is the name? Hashem is what they use to not to pronounce the name. What is the name? Because he doesn't have a name. Let's try this again. In the Hebrew, what are the letters there? Because I'm about to hang up and send you to mommy. Hashem. No, it's what not. It the Hebrew doesn't say Hashem. That's what the Orthodox Jews say when they don't want to pronounce this name. Yes. What's the name? Okay, Exodus versus what? All right, you just read it, man. 315, dude. But now go to Exodus 6, 2 to 3. God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But my name, the Lord, I did not make it. I did not make myself. But my what? Lord. My what? But my name. What's my name? The Lord. Oh, but you just said he didn't have a name. Go to Psalm 83, verse 18. That men may know that though whose name alone is Jehovah. His name is what? Jehovah. So now that's. Oh, so wait, name. you just told me he didn't have a name, right? You just, you just said it was the Lord. Did you hear what I said? I said, the Lord in Hebrew, what is it? Did that part you didn't hear? Are you like playing dumb or you're not playing? It's You are dumb. Which is it? What is it in I'll Hebrew? Okay. Now you said he didn't have a name. Are you going to say I'm wrong and I apologize? No, I said his name is the Almighty. No, you didn't. It's recorded. Yes, did. You said he didn't have a name. You're lying. You said he didn't have a name. It's recorded. Can you yeah. apologize now? Yes, I apologize. Okay. Now you're being humble and you're being honest. Okay. That's, that's appreciative. What do you believe about the Trinity? I don't believe in the Trinity. Why not? Because God cannot have three forms. Three Who told you? Bodies. Did God like call you up on the phone and tell you he cannot have three forms? Uh, according to the Old Testament. Show me in the Old Testament true. where it says he can't have three forms. Show me where it says. It's no, you made the claim. See, this is it. You're get, you made the claim he can't. Uh, show me where it says he can't. I can't show you because I don't. It doesn't mention. 
Yes, it does. I'm gonna, I'll show you where you'll have more than one person identified as God at the same time. But you said he can't. Where did the Bible say he can't be three forms? Even though I don't believe it's three forms. That's your language. That's not the Trinity. In the Old Testament. Where does it say he can't be three persons or three forms? Don't put words in the mouth of God. Where does it say that? I don't know. Can you show me a verse? Yes, I'm going to show you many verses. Genesis 19:24, just so I can have fun at your expense. Genesis 19:24. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Okay, now have you read Genesis 18:19 or no? Just curiously. No. Okay, if you read those chapters, the Lord appears as a man on earth and eats food that Abraham offers him. That Genesis 18, 19, it's right there. Don't make me have you read it all the way if you're going to deny it. So I hope you don't deny it. In fact, just to prove it to you that he was on earth as a man, read Genesis 19, 27. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he stood before the Lord. Okay, so he looked down. just stood before yeah. the Lord, right? Yeah. Do you know where the Lord was that Abraham stood before him or no? Yeah. Where was he? On the mountain. Okay, so you got that. Now read Genesis 19, 24 again then. Count. I know you know math. Count. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Count. How many is that? Two, three, the Lord on earth times. and the Lord where? Heavens. Count. Do math for me. Two how many? Twice. So twice. how many is that? Twice. So you do believe that, that God can be at least two then, huh? So now God is a unit. He's unitary. Not no, unitary. you just read in front of your eyes. Okay, you're going to get dial tone. The Lord is on earth who met with Abraham and he brought fire from the Lord out of the heavens. You got a Lord on earth and you got a Lord in heaven. Count. Even my kindergarten daughter can count. Lord on earth, one. Lord out of heaven, two. Count. Twice. No, that's how you count? Count. One, two. We don't, and when you were in kindergarten, when they say, okay, repeat the numbers. One twice. Is that what you said? Or you said one, two. Is two in your numerical system or you're scared of two? One, two. So there's two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now do you agree God can at least be two? Yeah, it could be two maybe, but not three. Okay, now I'm going to show you three. You ready? Uh, yeah. Go to Isaiah 63. I want you to first read verses 7 to 9. I will tell of the kindness of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, well, according to the has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for Israel, according to his compassion and many kindness. He said, surely they are my people, children who will be true to me. And so he became their savior. Okay. And all their distress, he too was distressed. And the angel of his presence saved them and his love and mercy. He redeemed them. He Ooh. lifted them up and carried them. Who was their savior? The, uh, the angel. But in verse 8, what did it say? Read it again. He said, surely they are my people, children who will be true to me. And so he became their savior. And that's Jehovah, right? Or the Lord. Let's go with the Lord. Or Almighty, however you want to call it. And then, so the Lord was their savior. But then in verse verse 9, who saved them? The angel. No, the angel of his presence. Finish it. It's not just angel. It's the angel of the, his presence. You know what that means? The spirit. No. Angel does not mean a spirit. You know what the angel of his presence means? What? The messenger that embodies the very nature, name of God. Let me prove that to you. Go to Exodus 23, 20 to 21. It's too long, buddy. No, it's not. It's 20 to 21. Even my eight-year-old can read it. Come on, man. Read it. See, I'm sending you an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and bring to you the place I have prepared. Pay attention to, the, to him and listen to what he says. Keep on. Do not rebel against him. He will not forgive your rebellion since my name is in him. Let me ask you a question. In the, in the Bible, who forgives sins apart from God? Okay. Okay, now this God. angel forgives sins, he says. He says, do not rebel against him. He won't forgive you. Why? My name is in him. What does it mean that God's name is in the angel? The spirit is in him. No, that's not what name means. Let's try it again. The Hebrew word for name uh, for spirit is ruach. What does it mean, my name is in him? What it means. It means whatever God is, he is. Because when you speak of name, you speak of God, the nature of God, the being of God, the authority of God. That's why the angel forgives sins, which is something only God can do. Do you disagree? Only God can forgive sins, right? Mm -hmm. And yet the angel forgives sins. How can he do that? How? Because my name is in him. It's right in front of you, dude. Uh, yeah. But for God's name to be in the angel, that means the angel has the nature of God. And if he has the nature of God, he is God, the angel of God. Count. How many is that? One, two. Now go back to Isaiah 63 because I'm going to show you three. You wanted three, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now go to Isaiah 63. 
Okay, I want you to do me a favor. Read 9 and 10 for starters. 9 and 10. Isaiah 6, 3, 9 and 10 again. You read 9, but read 10 with it. 9 and 10. And all their distress, he too was distressed. And the angel of his... You can say, is that what your mother taught you? Is the Shia who did muta with her? Are they, did they know you talk like this, Fred? You caught it, right, Jared? All right, we got some more customers. Just ask me about John seventeen three. Do you want to ask me about yeah, that? So, so I understand that. So why is it when when it says the only God? Yeah. So why why God. why you know I understand that you could take it out of context, but can you just tell me the correct context? I don't think you want to know the answer. Do you really want to know? No, I I sincerely Come don't. Come on, man! You're not pulling my leg, are you? No, 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 no. Okay. I, I'm very. All right, I'm let me walk you through. Or defend anything. I'm just here to clarify a couple of things. Now, obviously, John 17 is a prayer that starts at verse one. So I'm going to break mm -hmm. it down for you, right? Now let me break it down, if you don't mind. Let's see if you really want to listen. Okay, John 17 verses one, two, and three. Let's stop. Okay, it says, and looking up to heaven, Jesus prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. Okay. Now, before we move on, you got to be honest with me here. Can a prophet say, Allah, glorify me so that I can glorify you? Glorify me the way I glorify you? I, I don't think so. Secondly, do you agree Jesus is the son of God whom God glorifies in the same way the son glorifies him? Within the context of your belief, yes. Now I'm talking about I you mean, as a Muslim who's quoting John 17, 3. Because not just my belief. My belief, yeah, I know he's the son of God. Yeah, but what is on paper? Yes, yes, I, 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 I agree. Is, is If I were to read this and I was looking at Islam and Christianity... Would mm -hmm. I be convinced Muhammad is a prophet reading Jesus saying he is the son whom God glorifies in the same way that the son glorifies him when Muhammad rejects that? No. I, I, okay, I, good. I, so far you would It's That's very it. conflicting. Good. Now then it says, you have given him authority over all flesh. Now again, Jesus has authority over all flesh. Everything that's flesh, you and me, belongs to Jesus, is under the control, sovereignty, the lordship. This is what we call rububiyah, authority over all mm -hmm. flesh. That means even Muhammad is under Jesus. Now, I'm reading the Bible and the Quran, and I'm not Christian Muslim, and I look at what Jesus says here, what I conclude that Muhammad is teaching the same thing that Jesus teaches in John. No, of course not. Okay, so, and then it says, given him authority over all flesh, that he may, the son may, give everlasting life to all that to all those whom you give him. You see that in verse 2? Oh, I see. I thought that he was for the father. No, read it again. It says, okay. Okay. you yeah, have yeah. given him, him, you, Father, have given him, who's in the Son, authority over yeah. all flesh, that he may give everlasting life to all whom you have given him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So who yes, gives everlasting right. life? The, the Son. Okay, now, what kind of power must someone have to take believers, all believers from all time, and give them the life that never ends and make them deathless and incorruptible. Uh, it has to be divine. Okay. Then we come to, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. And Father, I have glorified you by finishing the work that you sent me to do on earth. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory I had with you before the world was. So if I read verses 1 to 5, Jesus affirms the Father is the only true God, and he is, but that he's the mm -hmm. Son who is one with the Father in his glory and in his divine power to do what only God can do, unless you believe a creature besides God can give everlasting life to all believers throughout all history. Does a creature do that according to the Bible? No. Uh, uh, no. So why are Christians wrong to assume, yes, of course Jesus is going to acknowledge the Father is the only true God. What kind of God is the Father? A fake God? So you're saying in that context, it's comparing it to like pagan gods? He's not saying that he's the only true God to the exclusion of the Son. He just told you he's the Son who is glorified by the Father the same way the Father is glorified by the Son. He's the Son who can do what only God does, give everlasting deathless life to all believers, and the Son who shares the same glory with the Father even before the world was created, something not said of any angels or humans in the Bible. Right, and, and it also talks about uh, him being existent before anything else. That's right there. So yeah. that's why Christians, when you keep going, maybe to you it convinces you Jesus can't be God. To us it doesn't because we read context. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what I was asking for was context because I wasn't able to find an answer that made sense to me at the time. So I thought I'd ask you. Now, what's your follow-up question to John 17? 
Okay, well, I have a comment because I have the Arabic version and yes. the English version. And when you were saying the word glorify in Arabic, it's yumajid, which can be like majid, which is one of the names. You could see somebody could be Abdul Majid. So, so I see your point. And there. the Arabic yeah. is even stronger, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So here you're admitting, and I'm glad you're being honest with my scripture, like you want me to be honest with your Quran. You just admit. It comes from Majid, one of the names of Allah, and Jesus saying that he possesses that glory, Majd, that Allah, or the Father, I should say, possesses, yes. So there's nothing yeah. in verses 1 to 5 that show us that Jesus is not God, but a creature separate from God. In reality, it shows that he must be God to say what he says, to share in the glory of the Father, and do what only God can do. Give never-ending, deathless life to all believers. Okay, I see. So What's why then? Why then would it just say you, the Father? Why? Why would it give that sort of because the, exclusion? Or, sure. I'm sorry, inclusion. Or because the Son, sorry. the Son, part of being the Son, acknowledges who the Father is, just like the Father uh -huh. acknowledges who the Son is. Because if you go now to Hebrews chapter one in your Bible, there now the Father okay. calls Jesus God and says that Jesus is Lord, the Rub who created the heavens and the earth. This is what they do. The Son acknowledges who the Father is and praises Him for that. The Father acknowledges who the Son is and praises Him for that. And then Jesus says, even the Spirit glorifies me, as did Jesus. But we'll get to that. But in Hebrews 1, now you have Arabic. You know in your Arabic Bible, the Father calls Jesus, Ya Allah. What in Hebrews which verse? 1, verse 8. Yeah, do you believe the Father is saying Jesus is Allah, Ya Allah? Do you accept that, that he's calling him Ya Allah, the God, Hatheos? Within that context, yes. So it, it, in, in, in Greek, what, 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 what is the word? Hatheos. Ha, it's the God. Hatheos, the uh -huh. God, which in Arabic is Ya Allah. I see it in my in my version, yes. yes. And then if you read in 10, who's speaking to who? In verse 10, it's still the Father speaking to the Son. Do you see what the Father says to the Son? He says, at the beginning, O Lord. So now, not only does he call yes. him Allah, he calls him Rabb. Yes, you're right. Kama yaqul, anta ya Rabb. Anta ya Rabb. But what did that Rabb do? He laid the foundation of the earth, um, and the heavens are the work of his hands. Yes, you laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the creation of your hands. Wait, so the Father is saying it, it, Jesus created the heavens and the earth. Interesting. Yes, and it says it, it, it will go away. Like, tefna, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Like, it, it, it will, will wear be out, destroyed or well, 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 wear out, will stay. But you remain. They will wear out, but your years but you remain, are the yeah. same. You remain the same, and years never end. So the Father just called Jesus Allah called them Rob and said, you the one who created the heavens and the earth, you will wear them out, they will wear out, you remain the same, your years never end. So to us, that's what we expect to find. Jesus acknowledging who the Father is and praising him for that, and the Father acknowledging who the Son is and praising the Son for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why you're on a good path. And whenever you feel at peace to let me know you've come to Christ, you can do it privately. No, oh, I think I can tell you now. Oh, so. I'm going to. I'm gonna just find what I mean. What I need to do, and I know oh. there isn't like the, the like a creed to recite. Okay, so. well, you're, so you you believe then that Jesus is Lord and your Savior and Son of God. I I mean I I have to because I just have this strong feeling good, inside good, of right, me well. that, that just says that that just says that whatever in this book is some this is what I have to take. Okay, then here's how you get saved. This is what I need you to do because it's in Romans 10 verse 9. I'm gonna tell you. What Romans 10 verse 9 says, it says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Sorry, but hold on. You're making me cry. Hold on. <clears throat> that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So I just need to ask because Paul says you have to do it with your mouth, with others listening. Yes. Um, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross? See, that's part of the faith. And here's what I have to say. I have to because I heard what Ahmed Didat and Zachar Naik had to say, and they both don't really make sense. And then the Quran comes in and says, oh, well, do you think he was crucified? Well, done. well joke's on you. It doesn't, you know, you've been fooled. That's right. And doesn't really give any evidence, doesn't mention Paul, doesn't mention any anybody. So I, I yes, I, I yeah. believe it. If you, if you do and it's not compulsion, then and it's okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So then that means you believed when he died, he died for you to save you and forgive you from your sins. Yes. And you believe God raised him on the third day? Yes. 
And you I, believe I've he's, read that. So you believe he's also alive in heaven now? Yes. And he will come again in that body to reign on earth? Yes, definitely not to break the cross and kill the pig. And then you believe Jesus is Lord then? Yes. So then all you say, and you will just say it, and you can say it in Arabic and English, whatever you want, God answers and all language, uh, language, say, Jesus, I confess you are Lord, and I believe God raised you from the dead. Can you confess that? Yes, I prefer to do it in Arabic do because it. it's just, yeah. well, yeah, yeah, yes, who I'm going to say, إنك إنك ابن الآب والإله وإنه إنك قمت من الأموات في اليوم الثالث. My point is that the Quran, if we go by modern science, is full of contradictions, and if we examine the Quran internally, it contradicts itself. That's why you even have abrogation. You do agree with abrogation, right? Yeah. You believe that the Quran teaches it, right? Yeah, it abrogates it. Do you believe the Quran is the speech of Allah? Yes, I do. And it's uncreated, right? Yes. All right. So my question is, the entire Quran, every part of the speech of the Quran, it's perfect and flawless and equal, right? Because if it's all the speech of Allah, there is no part of Allah's speech that's better than another part of his speech, correct? Yes. You agree with that, right? Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Now, you just said the Quran is the speech of Allah. It's uncreated. Yeah. And there is no part of Allah's speech that's better than another part, right? Well, uh, yeah. And the ayat of the Quran, they are the, the speech of Allah, correct? Yes. Okay. Chapter 2, verse 106, Surah Al-Baqarah, 106. Nothing of our revelation do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we bring in place one better or the like thereof, similar. Okay, now I'm going to ask you a question. You just said the entire Quran is the speech of Allah and no part of Allah's speech is superior to another part, right? Yeah. But here it says there are some verses of the Quran that are better than others. How is that possible? Um, better in what sense? Uh, any sense. How can any part of Allah's speech be better in any sense? My question to you is how can... Any part of Allah's speech be better in any sense than another part? Um, maybe it's like in a human sense, like better for humans. Better for humans. So yeah, like you're saying that know. some of Allah's speech is actually more conducive and beneficial for humans. So some parts of Allah's speech no, is no. less conducive? No, 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 no. Actually, no, 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 no. I, 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 I retract that. that. No, I retract that as a... Uh... But this is all right. Okay, so then which is it? I'm trying to figure it out. Um, I mean, better. Um, yeah, I, to be, I have no idea. To be honest, I mean, just to be honest. I mean, really. okay. Now, how many more problems I'm going to show you at the Quran before you say, "Man, I give up." Yeah, yeah I mean. So when uh, are you going to give it up, man? When are you going to stop? Islam's not for you, buddy. And this is just we're talking about. The contradiction of the Quran, the mistakes in the Quran, the errors of the Quran, historically, internally. And again, one more time, I haven't even talked about the moral issue because I don't want you to go until I want to see how far gone you are or do you still have hope? Because I have some problems when I read the Quran because the Quran is supposed to be carried out by Muslims till the last hour. And I'll get to that mm -hmm. in a minute. But one more time, you believe the Quran is uncreated. Yes. It is a speech of Allah, and there's no part of Allah's speech that's better. So yes. then how can one part of the Quran be better than another part? Um, I don't know. I don't okay, know that's good. You're honest. Your honesty will lead you to the truth because God loves an honest heart, a humble heart, mm. not a heart full of error or pride or arrogant. Mm. All right? Are you okay with your prophet abolishing adoption? Didn't he adopt a child? And then he abolished adoption because he took that child's wife. Took Haritha. his wife? Yeah, Zainab bin Josh. Zayd yeah. ibn Haritha, he adopted him. But then when Zayd married Zainab, Muhammad lusted for her. Allah had Zayd divorce Zainab so Muhammad could marry her. And then he abolished adoption because people were making fun of him. Oh, Muhammad took his son's wife. So he abolished adoption. Hmm. So, so uh, 
Yeah, that's in 33, 37, brother. This is Quran, and I'm going to give you Muqattal ibn Sulaiman Tabari. Man, I'm not making this up. And remember when you said to him, Zayd ibn Haritha, we're looking at the right screen here, the freed slave of the Prophet, on whom Allah has bestowed grace, and you have done favor because he had set him free. Keep your wife to yourself and fear Allah. But you hid in yourself. You hid, but you did hide. You hid in yourself. So he told him, keep your wife, but he was hiding what was in his heart. What Allah has already made known to you, that he will give her to you in marriage. Are you not bothered by this? Zayd, his son, adopted son, married, and Zayd said, I'll divorce her. Muhammad said, no, no, keep her. But then Allah is rebuking Muhammad. You're hiding in your heart what you knew our will was, that he divorced her so you can marry her. Are you okay with a man taking his adopted son's wife, making that woman the mother of his adopted son? Um, but th did he take him like like the woman uh, was fine with it? Of course, he's the prophet. Of course, I want the prophet to have. So if you divorce your wife yeah. and she's okay with marrying your dad, oh. now she's your. What is she to you now when your dad marries her? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, okay. I'm okay, gonna... when your dad marries your ex-wife, mm. what is she to you? Your stepmother, right? Yeah. But you did hide in yourself what Allah has already made known to you, that he will give her to you in marriage, that which Allah will make manifest. You did fear the people. See, Muhammad was embarrassed. No, I can't marry her. People are going to say something. Mm -hmm. Muhammad married the divorced wife of his manumitted slave. Whereas Allah had a better right that you should fear him. So when Zayd had accomplished his desire from her, we gave her to you in marriage so that in future there may be no difficulty. Now watch why Allah supposedly did this. To the believers in respect of the marriage of the wives of their adopted sons, when the latter have no desire to keep them, i.e. they have divorced them. So do you see why he did it? So that other people could also marry the divorced wives of their adopted sons. Hmm. Are you okay with that? Um... Mm. No. Then you're not a Muslim anymore. And by the way, right after this, Muhammad said no more adoption. That's chapter 33, verses 4 and 5 and 33, 40. So I want to ask you another question. Since Muhammad said, I did this so that I can show you it's okay if you have an adopted son. If he divorces his wife, you can marry that woman. Make her your wife. But then he says, no more adoption. So then... What kind of example is Muhammad setting when Allah knew he's going to abolish adoption? Um, I don't know. To be honest. You know, I know you don't know. Now you're troubled. Now, when you get a chance, you can reach me out at Skype. I just sent you my Skype name in, in private. Contact me. We'll talk more. But you just left Islam. You just pretty much denounced Islam because you said you're not comfortable. No, you're not okay with it. And that means you still have some morality in you there's hope for you and may jesus reveal himself to you because you need to leave muhammad in comparison to jesus i'm sorry i don't want to offend you in comparison mm -hmm. to jesus he's garbage can i can i ask you questions on skype yes and we'll talk okay okay thank you man. Yeah. i appreciate this